attending the session. Um, my name is uh, Kim Masali. I'm from Citrix Systems uh, Finland. I work there as a, a channel development manager and uh, I'm glad that uh, you can see so many people attending uh, our session here. We have 45 minutes to talk about uh, what Citrix is about today. Uh, this is not going to be a very technical session because uh, that would take the rest of the day uh, to go through everything that we have on that detail. But uh, instead, we are focusing more on what you can do with the technologies that we provide. My name is, as I said, Kim Masalin, uh, and uh, with me today is going to be Kundis Bungurst from Arrow ECS. Uh, and uh, he's actually doing the demo part at the latter, latter stages uh, of this session. So, first, we are going to go through a bit what Citrix does today, uh, and then we'll see, see it in action. Uh, let me first start with uh, a show of hands. How many of you have been working with Citrix Solutions in the past or are working now? <coughs> Just a few. Okay, that's actually good. So, as said, uh, we are focusing more on what you can do, and of course, Atea uh, will and can help you in finding out what would be the best possible solution, both technically and, and uh, business-wise uh, afterwards. So uh, please do approach them as well. Uh, 
just a few words about the company first. Uh, we are a big company, a uh, US based company with over 10,000 employees at the moment. We have been around for 25 years now, which is a lot of time for a software company nowadays, if you think about it. Um, we do partner with over 10,000 partners in, in uh, more than 100 countries, so we are a very global company as well. So everything that we do, basically, is based on what our customers, basically you, tell us what you need. Then we find out actually what you need and find out a solution or create one for that. Um, today, this is uh, something I call the, the uh, kind of scare slide. You know, this is the reality that uh, most of us will and do actually work with every day. So, consumerization, while it so doesn't sound as scary, for some of you it might, because people tend to bring their own devices to work and give it to you and say, I want my stuff here, make it work. Very common, what I've heard from you. Uh, bring your own device, being part of that. Uh, then, of course, your HR department might think that, okay, how can we reduce, uh, or how can we allow people to uh, work from more places than just, uh, just office? Uh, your um, uh, financial uh, chief of uh, finance or, or anyone uh, working with that, with that thinks every day how we can reduce the cost of working. You know, how can we reduce the, the uh, number of square meters that we have of office space? And then, of course, there might be some disruptions. Uh, there aren't that many earthquakes here or floods. But uh, you know it can get cold, uh, sorry, cold at sometimes, and, and you can't get to work. So, so business continuity becomes very important. So if something happens, people can work. A disruption can be something that your child gets uh, sick, sick, and you need to stay at home. But your uh, laptop is at the office. You need to first normally get it there, then get back to home, so you can stay home with your children. That is a disruption as well. Small but important. And otherwise, if you don't have any solutions to allow you to work from any place or at, at least at home, uh, you can't work. You're not productive, and that gets expensive in the long run. I know that the infrastructure that you have built here in Estonia uh, is a bit different than, than we have built, for example, in Finland. It's much younger in the back end. It's, it's, there isn't that much baggage, as we say, that has, would have been built over time, from the, starting from the 80s. It's, it's much younger and probably more effective in that sense. But in many parts of the world, and maybe some, something here as well, if it started in the 90s, it's probably built. It's probably built for this, this type. So you have persons or people uh, working at the office uh, using company-owned devices and infrastructure, maybe connected uh, just through a, wired, uh, through a wire, and everything's there on, on site. If it's a design company, they have all the workstations there. You need to be there to work. And if you think about it still, how we work today, um, the reality now, call it new, rea new reality or current reality, is that people are mobile. People want to work from different places. They use their personal devices, their personal uh, applications, be it mobile applications or, or otherwise. Wireless is very common, probably for all of you as well. And, and you want stuff uh, that is running in the cloud, and you can use it anywhere. And of course, if, if nothing else, probably most of you at least, are used to finding out all the applications that you need from a store, be it Android Market, sorry, uh, Android One or, or App Store from, uh, from uh, Apple. People are used to doing that. And in many cases, as I said, the infrastructure may be built this in mind, and this is what your users want. The customers that we talk with, they always come up with these same challenges. These are challenges that you probably get from your management. They ask you to do these things. 
or then you think uh, this and, and maybe suggest this to your company. You know, uh, starting from the bring your own device part. You know, people bringing their devices, they bought, bought, the, bought it by themselves, or then maybe the company uh, or you uh, will allow your users to bring their own. Of course, it creates some challenges. Flex work, as said, working from any place, from home, from uh, different offices. If you have many of those, or different parts of the of the city, if you're in there. Security, of course, last year uh, we didn't, of course, order the NSA stuff to be in, in pub publicity that much, but of course, security concerns have risen lately uh, exponentially, you might say. Business continuity, we touch a bit, uh, mergers and acquisitions, meaning that uh, the company that you work in uh, acquires another company, or then your company is acquired by someone else. So there will be a merge. So finding those situations, if you have an infrastructure that can cope with that easily, it makes it so much easier uh, to go forward. And you can concentrate on the uh, hard parts. Workforce mobility, of course, and secure outsourcing, be it China. Or lately, I've heard that people have been uh, starting to outsource stuff to, to Africa. It's cheaper than China. So all of these are realities that you, you probably need to face or some of these, at least. You as an IT people, IT professionals, uh, managing your own company, company IT is probably. Uh, these are terms that you probably are very familiar with. We pick some of these here. Uh, this uh, virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI, or application delivery, be it Windows or mobile or web application delivery, how you uh, address those. Um, how do you give access to your files to your users? So these are very technical, you know, starting from remote access at home. How do you access stuff at work? So these are the very in your face type of challenges that you guys probably are facing today. If you add to that, you know, we talk about tactical, more tactical uh, layers there. If you add a layer, that comes from the management side, from the business side, as we just touched, uh, outsourcing, different regulatory compliance, how you <laughs> enable sales to be more effective, not asking them to come to the office to report every time they, they need to do that, every day or once a week even. Um, or how do you transform your branch offices uh, or, or uh, make it uh, you know, lighter branch offices, uh, sorry, lighter branch offices, you don't have to have, to have that much IT in there. Or, or any of these kind of things. This is the maybe more higher level, but this is also things that you need to cope with. Not just the technical part, but the, the logical part here as well. So what this brings and actually boils down often is the workforce mobility. How do you redesign the workplace? What is actually a workplace? Is it a place at all? In many cases, it isn't. And, well, here's the word workflow. It means how any given individual at your organization works. If you need something done, what is the process to get to the end? So how this will change as well, how to optimize it, how to avoid too much moving around, driving around, commuting around. So that's why we actually bring uh, into the table and into the discussion a term mobile workspaces. So workspace, normal workspace is the space that you go to the office, you have your pictures in there of your family and all that. Uh, but mobile workspace, as said, it unites everything. Actually, two most important things that it unites is the applications. If you think about your users, they use applications. That is the key. Knowledge workers use applications. When they use the applications, they produce data. The other part here. And of course, they consume services that you provide to them. So applications, data, and services. And if you add that to any device that you want to use, or the user wants to use, over any network, then you have a mobile workspace. If that all works seamlessly. And that is something that we are all about. Here are some other things about that. I said mobile and virtual app applications. So um, 
be it Windows applications, mobile applications, or, or web-based applications. Uh, instantly uh, syncing and, and sharing all the files. You have tools to work with your peers, your co-workers. And of course, the security, we can't forget that. And as I said, on any device, on any network, any cloud. That's what we are all about. So here's a more, maybe a more um, clearer picture of what we mean. As I said, the most important things here on the top, applications and data. That are, those are the things that your workers need. And, and to be honest, I think that would be the most important work that you can do is to provide those to your users. Then, of course, we have desktops here. Some people might say, okay, well, do you need any desktop anymore? That's a good question. We can discuss that later. Some people do, some people don't. It's more, more often that you're used to having a desktop. You know, you have the icons in the certain places. If it's moved from there, it's, it's terrible. You may have encountered this in your company as well. Any change is bad, at least from the user's side even though it would be the, the wisest thing to do overall. And then, of course, you have the tools to work with, with each other. And I said, we can't forget the personal stuff. Even though your company probably does not require you to use Facebook, many of you do. Um, you actually can even use it in work relations as well. Some companies do. Then you have your photographs and movies there, probably movies that <coughs> maybe your main job at work, but uh, could be something. So any device, any location, as I said earlier. Uh, the infrastructure part then that allows you, and this is the, tech, this is the most technical part of this presentation, is that you have uh, the founding the data center there, then you have possibly desktops, definitely the applications, be it Windows and mobile, SaaS applications, the way to sync files, and then work together with your peers. And also, as said, you are used to working with app stores on your mobile phones, mobile devices. We are bringing it to the enterprise so you can add your office applications in there and everything, all the Windows-based applications there to select as easily as you take Evernote from your store on your mobile device. Make it as easy to get your uh, OneNote from your office uh, office uh, suite. These are the product product names, and what we are touching today are desktop, Xen desktop, Xen app, Xen mobile, and Shareify. We do have all of these, but we don't have said have the time, a luxury at the moment here to talk extensively about those. Please come to our site, uh, sorry, our our um, booth there, and we can talk more about this. Uh, as said, the idea is to find new ways to work better. And of course, this is the last of the soft things that I'm going to talk about is also to enable you to work better. Some, think, some people might say, okay, what to do with my life? I have my work life, and then my other life is just uh, it's totally separate from work. But that's not the case in most cases. By the way, uh, if you did notice, uh, it's, it was a nice video, I think, in my mind, but the searching part is that uh, the surgeon actually wears his, uh, his operating room uh, uh, outfit in the field, the soccer field. I don't know why I try to ask that, but you know, maybe that's something that they do in this. But as I said, it affects life, probably, hopefully, in, uh, in a positive sense. So if you talk about the Xena and Xen desktop, those are the solutions that allow you to use your Windows applications and desktops, if you want, from any place through any device. Basically, that's it. And uh, as said, that's actually a very good way to mobilize, mobilize your Windows applications to be used through your Android device or uh, your uh, iOS device. So the idea is that you take everything away from your local laptop or <coughs> desktop computer put it as a service to the data center, and then, of course, bring it back, or show it, actually, from the data center back on the device. And, of course, the device can be you know, uh, not just desktop, but laptops, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, tablets or phones or whatever. 
So regardless of that. Just a uh, very, well, this is the most technical picture that I will have in this uh, presentation, how it actually works and the components, but we can, as I said, talk about that later. You can have everything that you have at the moment on your local uh, laptop to be delivered from the data center. Then Xenap is part of Xenap stuff, but then we just talk about mostly about the applications. Well, the Xenap desktop gives you a variety of ways to uh, deliver the applications and desktops. Xenap focuses on the apps mainly, but of course it can actually give you access, as, as uh, Gundis will show, on the um, a desktop side as well. well. We'll see how it works. Then, as I said, the App Store part, receiver is available on 3 billion devices at the moment. Marketing my slide. But if you have the operating system here on this list, it works for you. So that this is actually what enables the uh, device independence part. Uh, some, some of you guys are going to say, okay, Blackberry not so hot at the moment. But at the same time, we have, for example, the Chrome OS or Chromebooks rising, rising quite a bit on the market side. But you are probably used to Mac OSs and uh, iOS and Android devices, uh, pretty much, and of course, obviously Windows. So this is the part that enables the device uh, independence. And the idea is that for a user, it's always the same user experience with whatever device. We do have a lot of applications delivered. Most of them are Windows applications. But if you work today and look at today, it's not just the Windows applications. As I discussed earlier, we have the iOS, Android, and HTML5 applications in use in companies quite a lot. And while for the user, it actually gives them access to all the best applications that they need for their work, for you guys, it creates a monster like this. And this is the monster that you actually need to work with and try to solve. And there's something that we can help you with as well. Mobile applications, for mobile applications, we have uh, a product called Xen Mobile. We'll see that in action in a few minutes as well. And as I said, it's a comprehensive enterprise mobility solution for all the applications, whatever kind they are, be it Windows applications, mobile applications, or web applications, data, and of course, for all devices. Uh, it is an a MDM solution, so mobile device management solution, but that's only just one part of it. That is something that there are, have been, or as are companies that do this part well, uh, this part as well. But as I said, we do that and so much more. And we'll show that here in a moment, what it can do. We have over 100 works enabled applications, that means that you, if you have a mobile application, you can wrap it, wrap it in a package, uh, have uh, your company manage it, and you can deliver it to your users. And it's growing quite a bit day by day. Uh, what we do provide with Xen Mobile are works mail and works web. Kuntis will show those in action. So these are actually mobile applications that we deliver for your use. That actually brings you a secure email and a secure browser. So you, you don't need to rely on your Android or iOS device applications for that. Uh, data sync, this is something that is very easy to grasp for most of you. If a word uh, a Dropbox problem tells you anything, Shareify is a product that can solve that for you. Why Dropbox is a problem usually? Two things. One is that you don't know where the information or the data files are stored. Who might be who might be looking at those? And the other, and I think the most most burning issue about the Dropbox problem is that if anyone at your company puts something in the Dropbox, moves away from the company for whatever reason, all the files, everything that is in there, goes on with them, without them needing to do anything. And as it's a private account, no one can actually touch it. So it actually gives you a possibility to be a thief without you, you know, doing anything actively. So that is actually a worry at the top management at the moment very much. 
what, how we uh, how we share uh, you know how we do this uh, and solve the Dropbox program is that we let you tell where the files are stored in your own data center at your trusted uh, uh, so, uh, uh, provider's uh, own data center or cloud. Or then you can actually choose to store it in Amazon or whatever cloud you want. So it gives you a possibility, <coughs> but uh, actually the solution is that you have it in your data center inside the country. Never lease there. <coughs> As said, mobile workspaces is the thing that the Citrix talk, talks about. And uh, as I said, what, what it does, it unites the applications, data, and services in one uh, solution. We are leader in this, definitely. We have all the tools. You don't need other vendors' solutions to create these mobile workspaces. And actually, how they work, Gundis will show us exactly now. So, uh, I would like to start by taking a picture of every one of you here. I will use it in my demo later. So, the idea is... Uh, smile. Yeah, smile. <laughs> uh, I'll upload it to my share file. Meanwhile, uh, 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 I already was introduced. Uh, I work for ROECS. I'm a solution. Uh, a specialist, but uh, I, have I have to travel from time to time because I cover all the Baltics, <coughs> mostly uh, with Citrix stuff. I'm certified Citrix engineer, uh, so yeah, travel is one of the things I have to do. Uh, <coughs> recently, I had uh, uh, one. Uh, it was last year event, it was our inspiration days and uh, just one day before the, all the presentations and stuff, my uh, SSD drive uh, died on the computer. Normally it would be a big showstopper as uh, everything uh, usually is located on the computer and, and, and uh, in my case uh, a lot of stuff what I was prepared was already virtualized and I just borrowed another computer <coughs> and uh, used it for uh, presentations and things like that and for demos was al also in data center so oh, oh, I just need my scripts and they were in safe place. So uh, today I will show uh, the same kind of uh, setup solution uh, we will use uh, virtualized uh, applications will connect to my environment and uh, see how it works in real life. Uh, save this picture here. Okay. Now oh, it's uploaded. So uh, let's close it. So I will start with access to my uh, virtual environment. Uh, there is a lot of ways how to access it. Uh, Kim also showed the picture, the Citrix receiver thing. Uh, you can use uh, this receiver on uh, almost on any device, but uh, sometimes you don't have permissions to install anything on the computer or device. Then you can use web browser plugin or uh, you can just use HTML5. So there is also a Java client. So you are not limited in any way. Uh, <coughs> so uh, this is my environment. Uh, it's a web browser and uh, actually it's in Latvia, my demo center. I will plug in. This one. So uh, what I get here is uh, desktops, but uh, I would not like to talk about desktops so today. 
I will show that it's possible to run them and most of the hot stuff is here, it's applications. And uh, to better show the functionality, I was planning to do some kind of proposal, Netscaler proposal. Uh, what I need to do, uh, to have for this, uh, I will use my virtualized uh, Windows Explorer where I have already downloaded a uh, Netscaler datasheet. Uh, and I will, uh, here it is, those are my company shares. My local disk from this computer. So uh, I will just open it. Here. And this is a data sheet. I will use it in my proposal uh, as a source of information. And what I need also is Microsoft Word. I can run it from here. Uh, I can use a search. You see, I can type in and I see the options. Or X, uh, just type in what I need. Sorry, <laughs> I just logged out. Um, So, uh, and there is all the applications available for me, uh, all the virtualized applications, uh, uh, a lot of them. So I usually use the search when I want to find the uh, application. It's uh, the main use is, uh, those are all applications are available for the user to run. But uh, sometimes it, he needs this Microsoft Easy application once a year, just that not, no, uh, doesn't make sense to keep it on the desktop. So. Users just uh, can add here those applications they use uh, most. Uh, let's add some PowerPoint and it adds here. So, uh, yeah, we have our <coughs> Netscaler uh, PDF uh, and we will open Microsoft Word and start a proposal. Uh, this is Scaler. So uh, at that point, I I realized that I need some picture. Uh, I need Netscaler picture, but I have it here on my flash drive. Those are virtualized applications. I, as I said earlier, uh, it means that what I what we see here is just a representation. I just closed it again. Let's open again. Yeah. So uh, this is also a representation. Uh, everything you see is uh, running on my data center in Latvia, and I'm just sending keystrokes, and it sends picture back to me. Uh, now I attach this uh, flash drive on my local computer, and it redirected. It means that it's accessible from uh, virtualized. Uh, application. So we can choose Netscaler. Uh, in this case I will just insert picture here. Insert picture. Uh, let's choose my mobile drive and it does the job. So uh, I can continue the work uh, at some specifications. Let's go down. Actually this should also work if we try. Uh, I know it's a PDF. I should use PowerPoint. But uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's add some specifications. And uh, could be a situation that uh, we leave this computer at work. We go home and we would like to continue our work on the different device. So uh, 
plug by I will do. Uh, I'll just uh, leave it running here, and I'm, I'm on, on my way home. Take the picture I did it uh, at the first, uh, and uh, now I will just connect uh, with different device to the same environment. Uh, so let's switch to other device. Enable airplay. Okay, it's here. So uh, this is iPad, iPad Mini. Uh, on the, in this case, I will connect through the uh, Citrix receiver to the same environment. <coughs> Refresh the applications. It will ask me to log in. And as you see, the look is the same as I had on the computer. All this uh, storefront is. Uh, and all the devices are the same. The second password. So I see uh, this uh, PowerPoint app is on my uh, desktop and uh, if you look at the com uh, computer, uh, I can switch it back, uh, you see that the session is gone, it took <coughs> away the, all the sessions. No more board or uh, Adobe Reader, and I go back to this one, and here it is, I can continue my work. Let's add some more text. You see, uh, everything is happening pretty fast, even it's in Latvia, on its own wireless. So, uh, in my experience, you can uh, work uh, even with uh, very low uh, bandwidth, like like 15 kilobits for board applications. Yeah, the latency is the uh, biggest issue. If it's more than 200 uh, milliseconds, then you have to use other Citrix technologies like branch and Peter and stuff. Mostly, in this case, uh, it works well, even on those ferries where there's almost no internet at all. Uh, so, uh, at this point, I would like to add also this picture I just took uh, uh, minutes before. Uh, let's do insert picture. Share file, uh, my files, folders, at the action. <coughs> I guess this one is the right one. Yeah, it downloads a picture right now. Yeah, somebody is hiding his face. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, uh, what I wanted to show that uh, all the stuff could be connected securely. Uh, it's a share file uh, function, it's, uh, like corporate Dropbox, and uh, it's easy to share the files. And it's not only limited to uh, mobile devices; it has also Plugin for Outlook, and uh, if you will have time, I will show it uh, how it looks and how it works. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, what Citrix says, device doesn't matter. Work from any device. Applications are are the same. Uh, let's yeah, I can see that uh, there is also this uh, Adobe in the background. Let's see, maybe. It's Smaller. Can take, yeah, and it's easy to 
and to switch also between applications. That's we need calculator and we have it here. Yeah. So you can even work on that kind of devices. So uh, what next? Uh, let's uh, suppose I I did my great job uh, and uh, on the way to the uh, office I left it somewhere I don't know where. So uh, I'll just close the session. to see here uh, yeah we will switch to the other product right now to the MDM part uh, so uh, I have lost uh, suppose it's somewhere I don't know where uh, I'm not sure if it's at home or, or, or somebody took it uh, while I was traveling So uh, I have an option, I have an MDM solution installed on this device. Actually I have the full product, uh, Xen Mobile, MDM is just a part of it. Uh, and it has a self-service portal. I can uh, do th th some things on my own. Uh, I don't have to call an administrator and ask him please uh, locate my device or wipe it. Uh, it's possible for me to do it. Of course I can call him and he can do it also. Uh, so uh, here it is, it's my device and the first thing I will, I will do is just lock it and it should lock. Yeah, it, it's locked. So uh, next thing uh, and I, I can do the location, uh, let's see where it is. I've done it also before, and I can look at the map. I don't know, it was yesterday. Uh, it takes like a few minutes to do the request uh, location thing, and then he sends the data back. I guess it's Tallinn should be okay. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I see that uh, I lost totally the device, I can wipe it. but. Uh, Maybe I'm not really sure that it's lost totally. I can do the selective wipe, what it will do. It will remove the corporate data and leave my own photos on the device. So uh, a very quick uh, demo of works web, works mail. Let's go back. Those are the secure applications. It's called MAM, Mobile Application Management. Uh, it doesn't know. You can't download it because you just lock it. <laughs> <laughs> so it really works. You can't. Okay. Yeah, unlock. Okay, let's lock. Unlock the device. Push notifications to happen. Yeah. I think we are out of time, so people have already come. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So uh, I didn't manage to show you all the demo, but uh, you are very welcome to come to our booth and I can show the rest uh, of it. So, yeah. To see that we can really unlock it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it's not one way. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Thank you very much, Curtis. Yeah. Uh, I think we don't have any room for questions now, or do we? No. 
uh, maybe yeah some quick ones, but actually are very welcome to come to us and ask. We'll be around all the day. Yeah, right. Thank you very much. Thank you.